very warm welcome on the third day of the Provada. Um, we're going to have a presentation of uh, Jonas Kjellberg. He's the chairman of the board of uh, Nornorm. Very warm welcome from Denmark. Yeah. So it's up to you, the world, uh, the power of going around in circles is the title. So yeah. we're very curious. Yeah. I'm going to sit, floor is yours, and afterwards we have some time, little time for some questions. Okay, Jonas thank Kjellberg. you very much. Uh, great to, to be here and thank you for the introduction. So um, I'm Jonas Kjellberg. Um, I've had the, the great pleasure of founding this company, Nornorm, that I'm going to talk a bit more about together with IKEA. Um, so it's quite a big perception of seeing, okay, how do we take a circular stand on the, the furniture industry? Um, but a bit more about myself. I'm a serial entrepreneur, investor, author. I've done a lot of things in my life. Um, I've disrupted quite some industry by far, and I came into this industry and thought, okay, this is an old industry, so there must be a perspective of disrupting it majorly. And of course, I got IKEA on board, so we'll see how much damage we can do, or if we'll just go down. Just to also be very honest, most of my ventures go to hell, so uh, maybe nobody has to be too worried. But I've had some unproportionately good luck through my life, um, except those three books I wrote at Stanford. Um, I had the great pleasure of being a part of a small company called Yoltid that uh, became Skype. So that turned out to be okay. Uh, I also invested 400 million euros into a small shoe company called Salando. And everybody thought I was unproportionately um, stupid because every sane human being knows that uh, Everybody buys shoes in a store because um, you need to try them on first. It worked out okay. <clears throat> I also invested in a small uh, food company called Hello Fresh, and everybody said, you know, you have to buy food in a restaurant. Also turned out to be okay. Um, I was the chairman of a board of a company called iCloud. That was a really, really painful journey because everybody thought, you know, you had to store things on your own computer. And we were trying to explain to the world it was much more efficient to do it in the cloud. Um, but luckily, this fruit company called and, and bought us. Um, besides that, I've started nearly 40 different companies. Um, I started a company called uh, Player.io, Nanuba, and Kenetworks. Um, I sold all of these companies to Yahoo. So if you ever have a company that is not working out, call Yahoo. So I'm hoping I'm not going to be calling Yahoo with Nornorm Norm because you know they're not doing too well Yahoo today. So, but maybe a furniture company can be the last resort if this doesn't work out. Um, I also spent some time working for the Boston Consulting Group. I've been advising some of their largest uh, clients in in the world around digital transformation and disruption. So um, that's basically what I'll be doing. <clears throat> but as you hear, my life so far has always been about driving exponential growth and exponential disruption. That's my passion. That's you know, what I really am. That's why I get out of bed. Um, and I think this is what I want to really do in, in the furniture industry. But I think when I, when I spoke to you know, large corporates like H&M and Ikea, they're all talking about sustainability. And, um, but I came to the conclusion that actually that's just a lot of bullshit. Because what they're doing is they're doing the same model a bit better, but it's a shitty model. Fast fashion is always going to be fast fashion, even if you're sustainable. They don't like to hear it, but that's the truth. Same thing with a lot of the furniture industry as we're doing today, especially IKEA as well. 80,000 containers coming in every day. They're the most sustainable furniture company so far, but I thought maybe we could take it a step further. So my sole purpose of actually joining this is to actually see I want to build the, the first unicorn on a circular business model. So all the things we do at normal is 100% circular. We try to buy everything used and we circulate everything. So we're more of a logistic company than we are as a furnishing company. So I'll give you a bit of a showcase what we actually do.
was a bit of what we do. So basically, don't buy officer furniture, subscribe to it. That's basically the perspective. What we tried is basically building a service that is flexible, affordable, and inspiring. And I think we've taken the inspiration from companies like Spotify, Netflix, really seeing, okay, why should you own your furniture? You know, you don't own your buildings today. You don't own your coffee machine, you don't own your plants, but we still own our furniture. Why? It doesn't make sense. And coming from the startup industry where we constantly move, the only thing I know that in 10 years, I'm either going to be much more successful than I thought or bust. So there is no perspective. Maybe if you're a lawyer company knows that we're going to flatline, but I don't see any MD coming into their board today. Yeah, for the next 10 years, we're going to flatline this business. We're going to do nothing else. So this has just been a huge hassle. So we really took another approach to it. <clears throat> but the first start in this was basically building a fully circular subscription-based furniture model. And we wanted it to be flexible. We want it to be the most affordable. So if you're looking for the high-end stuff, don't come to Nornorm. We're more like Sara or H&M. But we can deliver in two weeks, and we can make a floor plan in three hours. So we can help you with a lot of things. And I think for us, it's a very simple perspective around if you don't own, you can replace items that we can circulate to others, which makes it affordable for more. So I think this is the perspective. And we started out being good for people. <clears throat> because if I walked in, in a lot of the companies I've invested and seen, most things actually look like crap. And we had the vision that the CEO's office should look exactly the same as everyone else. And you know, we already have companies like Electrolux trying to take that into place. <clears throat> but and <clears throat> starting with that, we have three basic looks. We have very few SKUs. So we have Nordic Light, Nordic Dark, Nordic Black and White. Trying to live on this Nordic in Heritage creating something we believe is very beautiful, but also doing that with a very limited number of things so we can actually send them back and forth. <clears throat> we also, in this business model, need to have furniture that will stand a long time. So everything is not about having furniture that we can use that is cheap, but we need furniture that we can deploy for more than 12 years. That means that we have actually moved away from using any IKEA stuff. Initially, that was the idea. Today, we work with some of the leading brands, <clears throat> and we only try to use, buy things used. So I think already today, we're one of Herman Miller's largest purchaser of used chairs, of the Aeron chair. We don't promise anything new. <clears throat> we promise better than you. So everything you get from us is used. We do office spaces. We also do home office. Everyone's been here for a couple of days. Everyone's been talking about the hybrid office. So you can have our stuff in the office. You can have it at home. <clears throat> but we also wanted to do it in affordable, because often we think flexibility, you think about lease. We said, let's make it cheaper than everyone out in the market, the very you know, kind of IKEA perspective. Let's make things totally different. So, Today, we're pricing it at one euro per employee per day. It's actually less than a cup of coffee every day. So that's what you actually pay for your furniture. 
and then everything is included. Design of your work, all the furniture you need, <coughs> delivery, assembly, setup. You can change whenever you want. You can remove your existing furniture and you can change everything in our app. So everything is included in those three euros. So if someone comes to say, Jonas, this is a bit expensive, I often say, great, can you show me your breakdown? Because if you can do this cheaper than me, I'm super happy to buy the service of you guys because we're actually growing quite fast right now. So it's not more difficult than that. We do not price negotiate. It's three euros for everyone. It's super simple. It's also a bit disturbing for a lot of people, especially because sometimes people think it's coming into a Turkish bazaar, and it's like, how do we negotiate? Let's start dancing, and we're like Swedish, like, no, this is the price, don't like it, leave. Um, so you can actually define it on your site. <clears throat> it's flexible. So we built this by defining switching days. So four times a year you can switch, we're building the whole back-end logistics because this becomes more as a logistic company than anything else. And we're building the infrastructure to actually understand how we can take things out and bring them back and then put them in circulation. <clears throat> and again, we do not see ourselves as a furnishing company. We see ourselves as a tech company because everything we build is tech. I think we're like 60 people today, 50 are in tech, 10 are in, in design and actually working with the design engine. But that's more about trying to understand how do we decode it so we can deliver a floor plan in three hours. So we're super proud about our 3D plan visualization. We have a 3D gaming engine, we have our sets, and we now have the first Algo that can actually churn out these floor plans. I think we have sent over 923,000 square meters of drawings to clients in the first six months that we have been alive. We have delivered 64,000 square meters already to clients only after six months, and we have a quite big trajectory. Uh, I think someone at a dinner yesterday told me, fuck, you're growing faster than we works." Yeah, okay, I don't know if that's good or bad, but let's see where that turns out. <laughs> doesn't always have to be positive, but we're, right now we're on a huge trajectory. <clears throat> we built the whole, inf <clears throat> we built the whole uh, app and system so you can now scan every chair, see where it's done. There is going to be a furniture ledger uh, in blockchain, uh, so all the furniture companies can actually upload here. So now you can go to our chairs, check where was it bought, where was it done, what material is it in, so you can actually see where it's done. So that's the whole perspective. And that's going to be an open source ledger that we're going to make available to everyone in the industry as well to actually see so we can get transparency. Because that seems to be not you know, the case in the real estate industry, I've understood, that transparency is nothing that you really, really want to work with. So <laughs> reverse logistics again, because everything today is done to push things out. Very thing, little is built to actually deassemble. It's a very, if you've tried to deassemble a Pax wardrobe, you know it's not very easy. So everything is made to push it out, so we're trying to see how do we actually get it back. <clears throat> but I think back to the basics, we want to create a better work life for the many people. In the end, we want every employee to have a good chair, a good working environment. We want every manager that is managing that person to also see you want something different, then we'll change, and it's also included in the subscription. And then I think we're taking a stand, and our model is more expensive to do because, of course, we include flexibility. We've lowered the prices, so we're more competitive than buying things. Uh, but we believe fundamentally that this is what the world needs. There's so much um, <clears throat> furniture being churned out, and I have one big bank in Holland coming to us and saying, we're going to change our retail branches, could you buy our furniture? And I say, yes, we're super happy to buy you stuff, let's see if we can make the deal. Uh, it's only one challenge, it's all in orange, specially ordered for that bank. It's very hard for me to do anything with that, so that's probably going to go to waste somewhere. So. So that's how we think. Um, so we're really, really trying to be env environmental and everything else. And I would also urge all the, the people here and also the managers is that the hardest part for existing companies today is not being sustainable. 
in their linear model, it's actually going to a circle model because that really needs, then you need to rethink the, the fundamentals. Um, we have already now over like 200 clients. We're working with you know, some of the largest um, uh, <coughs> startups, Klarna, Kri, Netflix, Miro. We're working with a lot of the co-working offices that have understood this, you know, Edge. Um, the next web, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, we're really, really on a roll. So that's basically what we're doing. Um, great to be here. Again, the company is six months old, uh, and I think we've been able to achieve quite a lot in those six months, and I hope that we can actually become bigger than IKEA. And that's what I told their board. In 10 years, I'm going to have a higher market cap than you guys. And they laughed at me. <clears throat> I said the same thing to Tele2 or Tele2 when we started Skype, that are going to have a larger market cap than Tele2. It took us 18 months. I said the same thing to H&M uh, when we started Salando, that we're going to have a bigger market cap than H&M. Everybody laughed at us. It took, unfortunately, 12 years before Salando was bigger than H&M. So we'll see. Or we will end up as we work somewhere in the gutters. We'll see. But we're going to give it our best, and we're going to throw a lot of attention to this. And we hope to work with a lot of you guys, um, and uh, even if we're the new kids on the block. So thank you. That was all for me. Thank you. We have some little time for questions. I yeah. start with one, because you have a, a very positive story. Yeah. You try to convince uh, all of us. Yeah. Uh, what's the, the main reason people are not doing it? What, what they are telling you when you have, have your story and say, well, it's a good pitch, but we are deciding not to do it. What's, what's the main reason, you think, on this moment? <coughs> I think there's two perspectives. First of course, it's, <coughs> it's fear. The people haven't tried it out first, and nobody wants to be the guinea pig. So I think that is fear of office managers and everyone saying, okay, let's just do what we've always done. Because if they would say that they should do our thing, then maybe they've also acknowledged that they've done something wrong. So I think that's first, fear of doing something new. Second thing, I think also the whole incentive here in the real estate is all built on kickbacks and in transparent perspective. So if you look at, you know, CBRE, JLL, um, Kushmir Wakefield, they, they all get you know, kickbacks from furniture providers. So uh, there's a reason a Herman Miller chair is 2,000 euros. If I send my uh, IKEA people there, they say the, the cost for material is 97 euros. So there's a burn down of distribution of wealth that is not only going to Herman Miller. So I think that's uh, perspective. Uh, but you know that's where we are, so we'll just have to adapt to it. But, um, we think about, so the result for us is to lower our prices. Okay. Very classic IKEA. Um, yeah, come to you. Jonas, great story, I must say. And I hope you will be successful in the future. <laughs> um, we are talking about ASGs at the moment a lot else. And uh, you are making the people happy in the offices by providing them nice furniture. Yeah. Uh, they are sustainable. Mm. But we also know that furniture can create di difficulties with health. <coughs> I mean, there could be volatile or organic compounds in the, in the room. Yeah. How are you dealing with that? So I think we, we have taken an approach where we, we can only try to do what we do. So I think we, we have a, a big challenge of science. Should we buy Herman Miller used chairs that we know that maybe have not been produced in the way we would have wanted them be to be produced? Or should we buy and source new things which are carbon neutral and carbon positive, but then we're still producing new stuff? So I think that is the balance that we are constantly thinking. And then it's like, how do we balance that of buying old stuff that maybe could be questioned? Or should we then go and buy the most sustainable stuff by Takt and others, but it's still new and they're still offsetting part of their uh, carbon emissions against it? <clears throat> I also think that this people are fighting to create old models better. So I think what you, we try to do is fundamentally take a step back and make it circular instead, and actually how do we actually build a circular. So I would also urge everyone to look at breaking boundaries at Netflix, and Johan Rockström, a Swedish guy, who is actually really profound saying, you know, how we're ending the world's resources, and the only way to actually close that loop is actually that companies need to go circular, because we cannot have this wasteful perspective, and that goes in everything. So. Um, no. One more question. 
otherwise I have the last question. Yeah. In how many countries? W w can I do it all over the world already, or w w <coughs> how does it work? Well, if you're a large corporate and uh, doing more than I'm 10 very people, small. Yeah, then, then I think then there is a challenge. No, I think we're delivering in uh, Stockholm, Copenhagen, Amsterdam, Berlin. Uh, those are the major cities where we actually serve smaller clients. Um, then, of course, we can serve all of Holland is, is now open for smaller clients. The Berlin area is open, Stockholm is open, so... Um, yeah. It's clear. Thank you very, very much. When people want more information, your stand is at the uh, entrance of uh, Hall 11, eh? Yeah. Here, okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Good Thank luck. You. And in a few years, we have seen, uh, we tell each other, we were there on that day in Amsterdam. Yeah. And they start. Maybe this is the beginning, otherwise yeah. I will be coming back, or I will never come back again. Thank, <laughs> Thank you very you. much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.